Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. I wanted to take a minute to take a look at my lesson plan template. I use this in my classes. I have students complete this as part of their coursework, but then also as they plan for instruction. As you all know, lesson planning is a terribly important piece of the instructional repertoire for each educator. Um, we need to have plans that anticipate instruction needed in the classroom and then get those plans and figure out how we can operationalize them or make them happen as we teach. So this is the template that I regularly use. This is a starting point um, for uh, the work that I do with my students. By all means, there is no uh, perfect lesson plan template. Um, and this is one that I've massaged and polished over the years uh, as I've worked with different colleagues. But once again, there's other lesson plan templates that are, you know, have different nuances that might work better for you. Um, I share mine out in a Google Doc so that my students can take it and use it. I'll put a link to this doc so you can use it as well if you so choose. Um, up top, pretty basic stuff, your name, or if you're working with a group, what grade level this is intended for, the subject, uh, the date of the lesson, the length of the lesson. I think all of this is important as we help frame the lesson and the purpose of this uh, time with students or this instructional opportunity. A very general lesson topic. This might be a couple words, um, basically identifying what you plan on talking about, like a title of the lesson. Uh, but then we start to really drill down and talk about important elements of the lesson. So the overall goal, a broad action statement, students will understand that. Um, one sentence, one overall goal, what is the purpose of this? Um, typically what I do is I, when I assess lesson plans, I will look at this, uh, the, the goal of the lesson first. And then typically what I'll do is I'll skip down to the student learning objectives. In my experience, student learning objectives are very difficult to write for many students. It's a challenge to get them to be specific, observable, measurable objectives for class. Um, I like action verbs in mind. I typically have students write. Students will be able to and identify granular uh, components uh, that they want to see come about in teaching and learning in their classroom. I like to see two, maybe three at the most uh, student learning objectives um, and basically write them out and think about, okay, what can you achieve within that time period? So once again, when I look at an assessment, uh, when I look at a lesson plan and assess this, I'll look at the goal that the student writes. Then I shift down to the student learning objectives. Typically, if there is an issue with the lesson plan, it begins, in my opinion, with the student learning objectives. After I look at that, I back up. So if the student, you know, completes these effectively, then I go back up to the learner background. So I take a look at, okay, who are the students that this plan is being developed for? Is this a second grade classroom? Is this a seventh grade Spanish class? Is this a high school English class? Who is this for? Is this a, um, you know, is this in higher ed? Is this in school? Is it out of school? But who are these individuals that you're working with? What's the prior knowledge? What is the skill set? And how does it relate with what you're trying to teach here? Uh, so we want to situate this once again and a lot of the times the learner background will tie into a lot of the subject and the the length that you indicate up here so you'll think about okay as i look at your goal and your learning objectives i want to look at your learning background and figure out, okay where are students entering this what's the entry point for the instruction that you have planned out so this is the next piece that i'll look at after the goal and the learning objectives then uh, we move into the curricular standards. These are frameworks and standards from either uh, local or state, but they can also include, and in, include, and they many oftentimes include uh, frameworks identified in specific disciplines. So, if I'm teaching literacy or reading and writing in elementary, I may include uh, International Literacy Association standards. Uh, I, in middle school, high school, I would include NCTE standards. But then also we can fold in technology use. And I think we should fold in technology use and look at the ISTE standards or the web literacy uh, components. You basically indicate, okay, what are you teaching and how do these, how does this lesson link to those standards and frameworks? After that, we move into an assessment. I see assessment as being uh, two parts. 
I like to see uh, formative assessment, and we'll talk more about formative and summative assessments at a later date. I like to see a formative assessment uh, early on in the lesson or in the beginning parts of the lesson as a way to check in with students to see whether or not they are resonating with and they are picking up on what you've planned instructionally. So I say have an initial formative piece and then drill down later in a second assessment, which could be formative and or summative, but basically a secondary assessment where you check for mastery um, or you're looking to see if students have demonstrated mastery of your student learning, learning objectives. So one of the things we have to note here is that once again, this ties back to the student learning objectives. If these are successfully written, you should be able to see these here and then measure them or document how you will measure them there. Okay, so if you have uh, specific student learning objectives that you've indicated here, you want to make sure that you show down here in the assessments part one and or two how you're going to measure those student learning objectives. So you don't want to indicate something in the student learning objectives that you don't measure because then the question is, well, why are you including it? So once again, uh, an initial formative assessment and then follow back, depending on how appropriate it is, do you have a formative or summative assessment where you look for a demonstration of mastery? Um, then we move into materials and resources. This is pretty straightforward. This is just planning the uh, mise en place that you want for your lesson. You want to plan out exactly. You want to indicate exactly what you, you need to bring to the lesson so that your students can be successful. Uh, then we come down into the actual procedural piece of the lesson. Uh, I view a, the initiation as being two parts. So part one, uh, the, initiation, uh, the initiation or the opening of this entire lesson is how you get kids involved, you get your learners involved, you engage them, you connect it to previous learning. And the key component here is that you're trying to motivate your students. You want to get them excited. You want to get them to um, want to learn this. You want to build interest and build inquiry and build motivation right off the bat to get students interested and really want to learn this. The second part of the initiation is I think that you need to frame it and bridge to the lesson. So you want to start here where you're motivating them and then bridge and connect it to the lesson where you set expectations for learning, articulate, articulate why they will be learning it, and tell students why this is important. Many times uh, administrators will walk into a classroom and talk to students. And one of the things they'll ask is, well, why are you learning this? And I've often, in, the, in my previous experience as a department head uh, and as, a, as an educator, I was often amazed at students that did not have the answer to that. And that basically is an indication that the, the educator has never taken the time to, to tell the students or have the students tell them why they think this is important and why they're learning this. And I think that this is important for K-12 all the way up to higher ed. You know, we need to take time to not only motivate our students, but then spend a little bit of time talking with them about, okay, well, why are we learning this? Why is this important? How does this connect to what you've already done? But then also, how is this something uh, that you'll need to use in the future? We move down into lesson development. As we move into lesson development, a lot of this is just indicating piece by piece, bit by bit, a granular progression of how this lesson uh, will develop over time. What do you intend on doing? Um, several students in the past, uh, students will either write out a narrative where they'll indicate teacher will say this or T will say that, T will say that. Um, some students will write out a script here. Um, some students will just write bullet points and they will say teacher will open the class, teacher will review the PowerPoint, teacher will, you know, it starts small group uh, discussions. So to, it, I leave this wide open to students to indicate how they want to share this section in lesson the, in the lesson development. Um, this could be a narrative, this could be bullet points, uh, depends on what works best for the individual that's completing the lesson plan. One other, a couple of the things that I need to see in here one, this has to connect back to that key knowledge and skills that you've identified in those student learning objectives. So once again, your student learning objectives are the two to three things, the goals, if all else fails, what do you want the students to be able to leave with uh, after the lesson? 
then the assessment is how will you assess mastery or how will students demonstrate mastery of that? The lesson development is how are you gonna make all that happen? Okay, so the, the three of them all, those three different components all have to interlock. Then uh, other things that I would want to see and I look for, um, and these are from students that are, are doing a very good job lesson planning, is I want to see the questions that you're asking. I want to see uh, an understanding or an explanation of instructional grouping. So will you uh, have students move around the class? Will you have an understanding of what different groups will do for different instructional opportunities? So what are the pedagogical affordances of whole group, small group, pairs, individuals, whatever it is? Do you have students moving around? And if so, why? Or do you plan on just sitting in front of the classroom and talking and having students soak up the wisdom that's coming out of your mouth like they're sponges, um, which hopefully you're not. But how are you setting up the grouping and why are you setting up the grouping for that? Um, and, you know, basically setting up a pro approximate times for this. One of the biggest challenges that we have um, as educators as we start getting our feet wet in the classroom is, is thinking about timing and pacing in the classroom. And I think in the lesson plan, if you start to figure out the times for each one of the components, you want to have some wiggle room. But as you start to think about timing, then you can make sure that you are a little bit more successful when this class actually comes to fruition. I also want to see how you're going to think about diversity. I want to think about how you'll try and support different learners in your classroom. I want to see how you'll include opportunities to support students with special needs, support English language learners. I go into a lot more detail in other versions of my lesson plans as students advance in lesson plan, uh, you know, their understanding of how to develop lesson plans. But I really want to see how you're trying to make sure you teach to all students in your classroom, not just the ones that are paying attention. And last but not least, in lesson development, I am a believer in Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, I many times uh, I when I have students fill out this, I basically have them fold in uh, pieces from Bloom's taxonomy, and uh, a lot of them will bold face the text so they can show that they are aware that they're including Bloom's taxonomy. And most of this is just an opportunity to push their thinking about okay, what what am I asking for my students here? So I generally will nudge them to think about Plume's taxonomy and, and think about more and more higher order of thinking in their classroom. And the last piece of this is closure. Uh, closure for me is a very important part of the lesson is basically wrapping it up. Closure, closure should not be an administrative close. Clo that, that means that closure should not be, okay, the class is done and now we wrap up. Uh, but there should be a way to really wrap it up get kids still excited thinking about the future and thinking about where we will head next. So once again, this is my lesson plan template. I use this for all of my classes. It has been used again and again over years at this point, and I share it out. And this is basically just a quick overview of how to fill out and use and my thinking behind the lesson plan and also ways in which I assess lesson plans completed by my students.